All right, phase three detailing. I'm going to start making his eyeball. And this is just a cylinder, dynameshed, radial symmetry. And you could transpose model all this stuff, but I like the freedom of being able to kind of just pick and choose and to kind of see what I like first without committing to actually adding in an edge loop. So, and you can very quickly just step up and down that radial count and put it on 12 for the dots around there and 7 or 17 for this area here and mask it out and inflate it or transpose it out and you know I, I'm detailing but I'm also concepting at the same time and I think part of the problem I have I guess when I'm working on these specific little greeblies away from the actual model is I tend to get way too small with my details and this is an instance where I do that. I think I do that on a lot of things. I'll point them out as they show up. But you know, here's one where you know, I'm making a shape. I'm going to stick on this helmet somewhere. Um, which would, this would be fine if it was a bigger shape that went on the back and was, you know. But for somebody to machine this part, this is pretty intricate stuff. Which for a sci-fi futuristic robot is fine. But um, you also see me doing some really weird techniques, especially here. It's like, oh, I want to cut in a shape. Well, what's the best way to cut in a shape? So, you know, I'm. you might see techniques on here where I'm like, oh, what a weird way to go about doing this. So I do a shadow box and clip it and use this as my, you know, Dynamesh thing. And it worked. Now, was that the most roundabout way of going about that? Sure. But, eh, you know, that's why I do these things is so that I can learn, you know, oh, gosh, I spent... 20 minutes doing that when I could have done it in five. Well, now from now on, you know, it's not a wasted 20 minutes if you learn something. It's a very well spent 20 minutes. Here's a sphere under initialize. We're going to put some shapes in the back of the helmet. And again, I get so caught up. I mean, I think I fell in love with radial symmetry in the eyeball that I just wanted to do more and more of it. So I overdo it on this thing and put it on. I really don't like these things that I put on the back of the helmet, but they are what they are, I guess. But you can see how easy it is just to kind of just create stuff in radial symmetry. But yeah, I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan of this design element at all. I did the trick where I surrounded those things with the mesh insert or the curve brush frame border. And again, I'm so caught up in the detail, all these little tiny details, and, you know, I go put it in the back of the head, and you, it looks ridiculous. It's too, too small. And none of this, thing, none of this stuff means anything. It's all just shapes, and, you know, there's no functionality to these buttons or anything I'm putting in here. That's not, again, I'm not the world's biggest fan. This could be, this would be a cool generator or something that's, you know, car-sized you put on the side of a something but it's not really that cool in the back of a helmet, to me at least. And the stuff I think I end up just deleting. I mean, again, a generator coil, you know, could have a bunch of wires coming out like a jet engine or something, but in this particular instance doesn't really work, and I'd have to figure out how to integrate it with a all this stuff and nah just get rid of those little wiry things stick it in the back and I guess call it a day I mean in an ideal world I would actually go back and rebuild that shape into something I actually liked and thought helped the overall design but this is one of those things where I just keep moving drag off a copy of that and then just mirror and weld it just push that over to the other side there get those to sit you know there's a little bit of clay brush in there nothing fancy not, not building anything just very quickly just put a little clay brush in there and call it a day and it seems like I see these little ZBrush crashing things happen every once in a while I've, I've noticed that if I have a dirty mesh with you know vertices that aren't being used and stuff is when is the only time I really get crashes and it's usually user error on my part having dirty things. So if you have something you think is dirty, go to modify topology, clean mesh, or just export it and then import it again and it'll kill the unused vertices and it seems to fix a lot of my crashing problems. And 
and so this this piece slides into the other piece so um you know this could have been another instance in this whole thing you know you, i might have tried to stay to like the 70 30 rule of you know lo-fi broad surfaces let the eye rest type thing and then underneath maybe have that 30 percent super detailed stuff that's a generalization but seems to work um on this thing i didn't really i just kind of put a bunch of stuff on it because i was you know again this is more about playing with techniques than ideally i should have designed something cool and also played with techniques but you know there's where I get a little bit side, size weird too is when I had those little little holes and stuff and that, you know, especially if I'm making a game res of this thing, those things are a pain in the butt probably could have avoided that and then just custom brushes like we've already gone over, you make custom brush shapes really quickly and try them out if it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't here's another instance where I mask it out And I know I want something there, I'm just not quite sure what, so I'll come back to that. So on the support metal stuff, just like in the front of the face, I have this kind of support metal look of this, you know, girder structure look going. So I just continue that in the back. So anything that's on metal underneath them, underneath her helmet, kind of probably has this look. I just follow that same design language. Go ahead and dynamesh these together, I think, or maybe I'll put a screw port in there. Yeah. Somebody can unscrew this part if they want to, or something. And I got a little bit crusty on these extrusions. I uh, wasn't careful with my, I guess, my polish or my Dynamesh resolution. Looks like I'm going to go ahead and build some pieces off of here. And you know, you can hide one side and clean it up and then just mirror it over, mirror and weld, once you're done cleaning it up. So you just know, you know, the clip brush isn't clipping across and getting in your way. Also use a slice brush to add geometry if you want to. And again, that was another mask, poly group, polished by features, um, extrude, face extrude in. And because I had that poly group still there, I could ring it with that rubber gasket thing. And And again, it, as I'm dynameshing and doing these insert brushes and stuff, I can kind of play with, well, what would it look like if it was these three, or those on the top, or it was on the bottom, or if they were dug in deeper, or not as deep, or and I can duplicate those off and Z remesh them, and because the Z remesh was so clean, I was able to go through and ring these, and then try and see if you know does this detail work. and it didn't so I went back and did it the other way and I think that worked a little bit better and it looked like some of those curved brush things were a little crusty on their detail and stuff <clears throat> but uh, usually they, they turn out pretty good Usually I just use the brush curve B, uh, insert brush curve B, C, I forget. One of the curve brushes that just adds curves. A long A curve, or adds a, a cylinder that follows a curve. And this is another, you know, another couple pieces I'm not a huge fan of, but just trying stuff out and you know looking back I probably just deleted this whole thing it, you know but again I was just learning the techniques and 
kind of what works and what didn't and added a bunch of stuff here that doesn't really add much and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but next time out of things to say about detailing. I think you've got it all. Um, again, as I move forward, I'll try and set up videos that show you the techniques as I do them one by one so you get a little bit better feel of how to... This is more of an overview of just, you know, here's how you could implement a bunch of stuff, uh, but it's nothing specific. Yeah, I had a little problem with this piece. It was starting to... It was, I'd, I'd been sloppy with my poly groups and dynameshing so I had a couple of and that was probably what was causing Seabrush to crash so much it was just the bad bad dynamesh on my part decided to make these things up top be kind of vents so I can just push those back and drop in that little plastic thing that we've used a bunch that little plastic thing with the holes in it that we can just shove in there come back to this piece and add too much detail to it always trying to add more rubber rings around everything. I don't know why. Because it's easy to do, I guess. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. More and more and more. Whatever. And I think this piece I accidentally dynamesh all together. Oops. And again, it's like, you know, that, that one piece was good enough. Why do I feel like I need to <laughs> make it even more complex? Well, it's like, well, if it's a little slider, you know, you need a little little uh, extrusion to kind of get your finger on it. and I don't know. And you can even get even more complex and, <laughs> you know, well, if it's going to slide up and down this thing, it needs a little a little divot so you can see. And it's like, oh my gosh, enough already. Stop. You know, I, I, it's funny that I probably spent more time on that stupid plastic slider than anything else on the entire helmet on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. Go figure. Good use of my time. And at this point, I know, just going around, looking at place th things I can split up into different materials. And again, always thinking in terms of modeling, keeping things separate so I can just go through and merge all these things into separate materials. And I'll go through that too on the videos because it makes it a lot easier to render and divide up your mesh. And if you can just fill with the material, you know, I have to sit there and poly paint little pieces. And by fill with the material, I mean material ID. Or though, if you were rendering in ZBrush, you could fill with the material as well, and a lot easier there, too. It's easier all around. Put some sort of key mechanism in here, just in case, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like she's a vending machine operator, you know, one of those little things where you can put in the gumballs. I don't know why I did. I I must have seen it somewhere and decided, oh, that, that makes sense for a scientific robot to have a <laughs> Coke machine key lock. It's like, well, if you're going to have a key turner thing, then it needs to have even more information. So I probably put a bunch of letters on there and stuff too and I, I, I since this is the second one and, I, and I'm looking around saying there's a whole lot of stuff not detailed what I basically do is just what you see here and what you've already seen is you know I have some lettering on a circle that I'll just imprint with the 
smart transpose and mostly I think after this point just a bunch of letters and stickers and stuff dropped on there but I spared you having to see me do all of that stuff here's some quick transpose brush stickers you know you can texture these later on or whatever and you can see I, I must have skipped quite a bit because there's the little lettering there so you can take your little coke coke key on the side and change it from whatever nonsense I put on there. <laughs>